Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's nighttime beach walk with Harbor Wild Watch. We are so excited to bring the cold and blustery beach to hopefully what's your nice warm home. Uh, tonight we're here with Stella and Luciana and these are the keepers of this fabulous park um, and we have special permission to have access um, here at Penn Met. Um, most parks, well, all the parks are closed, unfortunately, as well as playgrounds um, and such things. Uh, I know we talked to Eric Gunther today, he said, please don't climb gates, please respect public property, um, stay home, stay safe, um, and thank you Penn Met Parks for letting us have access to the beach tonight. Um, if you could give us a little shout out from where you're tuning in from, uh, that's always really fun. I see my mom's online. Hi from Montana. Um, so we're so excited to have you here and I'm going to be following these girls around because they are like beach pros. They've been in our Sea Stars and Beyond program. That's a junior naturalist training activity that unfortunately is kind of on pause for us right now. Um, but we're going to get to learn everything they know about this beach that they get to call home. It's their, it's pretty much, it's your backyard, right? Yeah. That's, oh, what a cool place to live. So uh, let's see ladies, what, what are some cool things you found so far? I'm gonna flip us around so we can... Okay. Uh, who wants to go first, Stella or Luciana? Oh, I can go first. Okay, Stella, I'm flipping around to follow you. Okay, I'm gonna have to find Rosie. I found them. I will say, so uh, one thing we, we decided, we're staying at a nice so, keeping that nice social distancing, and I'm noticing there's a lot of green seaweed on the on the beach. What can what, what is that? sea lettuce? Okay, and what does the sea lettuce tell us about what intertidal zone we're in? Ooh, is that the mid intertidal zone? You said. I think with the wind, you're gonna have to kind of yeah. yell at us. Definitely the mid intertidal. Okay, I'm gonna do a little camera zoom. The same DNA? That is amazing! They're just close to each other, which is pretty cool. Nice. And when two different um, same DNA colonies go to war, they basically devour each other. Hold on. They devour each other? Yes. Can you tell us what they use to devour each other? Do you remember? Uh, I think we're going to have to turn to you. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I'm, I'm definitely here to help you out. Uh, it's their defensive guts, which is uh, pretty awesome and gross. Um, I see some other sea anemones nice and close up here with me. Um, you can even see those nice oh, little pink a tentacles. Um, a oh, Stella found a colony. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Oh, excellent. How many sea anemones do you count there? One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven. Six. I wonder how many sea anemones live on this beach. Oh, there's like <laughs> billions. <laughs> excellent. Can you open that shell for us? I would predict, oh, yeah, just sand. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I realize there's a lot of wind noise. I'm trying to kind of muffle it with my mitten, so hopefully that works out well. Uh, Stella, did you find something over there? Oh, we're looking. I, I hear that a good way to find a moon snail is to howl. Can we can we howl to the moon snails? Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, oh, oh! I went, I'm looking for that moon snail. I'm going to give a shout out to Rachel who's at home answering your questions from Facebook. So if you see anything or have any wonders, please give her a holler and she'll do her best to answer you as we go. Um, we're kind of getting down to the waterline here. 
had to take my phone case off, so I'm being very careful. Nice, nice. All right. What'd you find, Stella? Shell debris. Oh, fish poop. Excellent. Nice. Okay, so when you say nothing so far, you mean like there's a ton of stuff here, but uh. <laughs> They're all like uh, Yeah, so maybe we'd say evidence of animal. Um, I know a lot of intertidal creatures, they really like these nice big rocks, oh, yeah. which if I peek over here, should we see if there's anything living on them? Oh, there's lots. Nice. Let's see what Ooh, more anemones. Usually there's some crabs under here. Excellent. Um, why, why would we not roll this awesome boulder? Okay. Uh, definitely a rule. Okay, so why why is rolling a rock that's bigger than our head a Harbor Wild Watch rule to be a good uh, beach guest? There's, there's a rack right behind you. Is there anything on that? Um, one thing I really like about night beach walks is our headlamps sometimes illuminate the eyes of shrimp. Um, so I'm kind of keeping a lookout for little sparkles of light. Mm, do you know what kind of snail? Good, nice. Ooh, yeah, periwinkles are little. This is that frilled dogwinkle, which is a great name for a snail. Awesome. They definitely get bigger than that. I wonder, um, when Rachel and I were here during the day, we saw like piles, like heaps of, heaps and heaps of those snails. I wonder, can we find a pile of frilled dogwinkles? Ooh, here's something. Stella, do you want to talk about this? Here, I'm going to set it here and <laughs> you can grab it. Do you know what that is? For Luciana? Alright, it's a clay baby. I'm going to have you talk nice and loud just in case the wind is... I like to call the tube worm opera um, and this is one of the few beaches where I've ever heard that and it is so strange. All right ladies I'm following you where should we go? <laughs> Too much pressure. No pressure here. Okay we're still looking for a moon snail. Yeah, they found a giant skate, and what were two eagles were trying to eat it? 
No, so an eagle flew down. Okay, an eagle flew down. Because of the bird hierarchy. <laughs> and then after the eagle left, two hawks came in. Ah. Oh. What a cool observation, Stella. That's awesome. Luciana, are you finding anything for us? Any shrimpies? Kind of some nice scuzz. Oh yeah. That might be one of our bamboo tube worms. They're also called banded tube worms. Uh, the scuzz also doesn't get a lot of attention, but often the scuzz that we see on the beach are microscopic diatom chains that in a lot of uh, abundance uh, you can actually see is that nice scuzz, which, you know, gotta love the scuzz here. Who knew you were coming to the beach with us at night to see scuzz? Woohoo! Sandy zone. Stella or Luciana, what's the coolest thing you've ever seen at the beach? I'm gonna have you talk really loud just um, in case. First one is a baby octopus. A baby octopus? Oh my Babies gosh. baby octopus and an awesome dead seal. Yeah. That's that's pretty rad. Um, wait, wait, wait. Did you hear that ringing? Ring, ring. It's a shell phone for you, Luciana. The ocean is calling. Actually, I, it's kind of a misnomer to say ocean. What is the Puget Sound? It's, it's not exactly an ocean, right? It's an estuary. And can you tell us what an estuary is? Do you know the estuary dance? I think you just uh, upgraded our... Rachel, I hope you're taking notes on this because that is an excellent estuary dance, Stella. <laughs> All right. Still looking for that moon snail. Uh, in the meantime, we're seeing some oysters here. Oh, I'm going to come to your sand dollar in just a moment. Uh, these oysters are the Pacific oyster. There's lots of barnacles living on top of it, as well as some limpets. Wonder if anybody's underneath. Oh, got a tiny little crab. And then I'm gonna be a good, have some good beach etiquette and put that oyster shell back just how I found it so that crab has a nice happy home. And then we're gonna shift over to Stella and she's gonna tell us about the amazing sand dollar. And is the sand dollar alive or dead? This sand dollar is dying. It is dying. If not dead already. Yeah, I think it might, the sand might be deceiving me. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh no, it's definitely dead. <laughs> definitely dead. Yeah, usually when you can see the mouth, can you point to where the mouth is? Nice, right, so the mouth right in the middle. If you can see that hole, that's a pretty good clue that the sand dollar is only a shell, which is called a test. Um, I like to think of sand dollars as sea urchins that have been squished. So another kind of funny name, we could call them a sea cookie. Uh, Stella, do you have any interesting facts about the sand dollar? Uh, they have bristles when they're alive on the bottom. Okay. And, um, they like to live in, um, usually there's a ton of them all together. Ooh. It's really cool. So like a 
sand dollar bed? Yes, exactly. There's one down there. Do you ever lay in the sand dollar bed? No, I, I would squish <laughs> That's nice of you to not squish. All right, we're back for a quick moment. Um, it turns out that really cold weather and technology does not fix very well, uh, but we wanted to at least uh, acknowledge uh, with a nice little wrap up this lovely sea star that we were able to find. So I have Stella over here and <laughs> we're excited for her to show off this lovely leather star that she found. Um, so I'm gonna flip around um, for a, a nice little recap of tonight's event um, as well as a conclusion with this lovely star. So if you're tuning in, we're so glad and uh, apologize for the technical difficulties earlier. Um, it's cold out here. <laughs> what can we say? So let me let me get the camera over on this lovely star that Stella found. What can you tell us about this lovely leather star, Stella? Well, this leather star in particular has five legs. So on the back, <laughs> it has five eyes. <gasps> Wait, okay. You're telling me that this sea star has eyes? Yes, they're they're light sensing eyes. Ooh, interesting. And they're on the end of each mm -hmm. one of these five arms. So right there, there would be an eye. Oh my gosh, I think it just winked at you. <laughs> very <laughs> Lovely. Um, what about, it kind of looks like there's a funny little hole on top of that sea star. Uh, what's, what's going on with that? So that is, that is, uh, the sea star's water filtration system. Perfect. Some would call that a madrepore, which is a mouthful of a word. Yeah. Um, so wait, a water filtration system, what's, what's that all about? Well, um, the sea star doesn't have blood. Weird. Yeah, so instead it uses the water around it. Awesome. Yeah, it's really cool actually. That'd be kind of fun if we could do that, right? Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. So this just keeps it clean and running through its system. Yeah, I hear there's definitely a lot of life in the Puget Sound, yeah. and it would be weird if you had a lot of plankton running through your veins. Yeah. Um, I wonder, can you flip that sea star over for us? Right, we're trying a little mic system for better hearing. Voila. Okay, so this is the underside of our lovely sea star, and I see those nice uh, five rows of suction cup Definitely. tube feet. Um, and uh, I know the water of that hydrovascular system definitely helps move those around. I wonder, do you see any tube feet wiggling around? Oh, I think those are pretty active. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, what about, do you know what's in the center of the sea star? Those are its fingers. Excellent. And then where's, where's the sea star's mouth? The sea star's mouth. It is, if I remember correctly from my training, um, <laughs> it's mostly Yeah, right in the middle. Um, and I know something, do you know how sea stars eat? Do you remember that gross fact? Okay, well I'm going to share because I think it's so gross that it's awesome. It is pretty awesome. Uh, they take their stomach and they put their stomach outside of their body by spitting it out of their mouth on top of their food, which is likely something like a, a poor helpless muscle. Um, they'll use their two feet to open that shell just enough so that they can get those digestive enzymes in that shell. Slurp, slurp, slurp. And once they're all done, they put their stomach back inside their body. You can imagine how romantic yes. a sea star dinner date must yes, be. Yes, very romantic and slightly nauseating. And sl very romantic, but slightly nauseating, as Stella would say. I love, I love that description. All right, we're gonna put this sea star back where we found it, and then I'm gonna point the camera back on Stella and Luciana. We're gonna say a big thank you to these ladies for letting us join them in their backyard. It is awesome out here. It is also freezing cold, so we're <laughs> excellent. We're gonna join the party, stay safe and warm. Um, again, we have special access um, information to the park, and we're so thankful for PenMet um, for letting us bring the beach to you. And we hope that you can continue joining us for our online free STEM education workshops, uh, as well as uh, feel free to like us on Facebook, follow us on social media, um, tag us, do all that fun fun stuff while we're 
uh, stuck at home and uh, learning and having fun. So, uh, any last words, ladies? Just the estuary dance. Oh, yeah, we're going to end with the estuary dance. That's perfect. If you want an estuary dance at home, that's the saltwater, freshwater mixed together with a little wiggle. Uh, we'd love to see that. So, thank you again, everyone, and have a lovely night.